Hi everyone, thanks for joining me again. Today we're gonna to take a look at the reverse pivot pattern. If you feel like this doesn't really relate to you, please consider watching because I'm gonna go over hand path and how it influences the movement, the rib cage and rotation, and, and how that moves throughout the movement in this pattern, but also how the hands influence that rib cage movement, and then also the pressure shift uh, through the ground that we see in this pattern and what we're gonna encourage uh, moving forward. If you're enjoying the videos, also remember to please hit subscribe and also go to ianmellagolf.com and sign up for the newsletter because I'm gonna get some exclusive videos going first for people that have signed up for those emails I'm gonna send out. Okay, let's take a look at the reverse pivot pattern. So typically what you'd say uh, the main dominant patterns in the movement visually are that as you get to the top of backswing, the upper body starts to tip forward, pressure then getting very early on the lead side, and then moving into downswing, the player making a compensation of the upper body then hanging back and finishing almost with the pressure staying too long on the right side there, going into the shot. So anytime that we're moving too much backwards through the shot, especially with an iron, um, can be quite hurtful with, with the delivery. So, I like, as I mentioned, I feel like this will be great for a lot of players, even if you don't quite see that exact pattern in your swing. Let's take a look at a few things that can influence it, starting with the hand path. Now, the hand path, the more I look at it on the 3D, the more I notice it be a really big influencer on the movement as a whole. So if you consider the way we learn when we're young, and our children are using their hands so much, um, to, to complete tasks and to explore. Um, it just shows that a lot of movement, where the hands are in space, is, is a big influence on the way we go around moving. So that can be even translated into the golf swing. So in relation to the pattern we're discussing today, typically what I would see is that the hands would move in fairly early in the swing. And then as they move up, they get quite narrow through the right hand to the right shoulder. So I'll show you that from face on. So as we go a little in, in backswing and then move up, this right hand gets quite narrow and that pushes the shoulder up. And you can see that then pushes the rib cage up. And now I'm getting that, that upper body into that position that I, that I showed you before, where we're tilting towards the target and pressure is ending up on my left side. So if you consider that the hand's moving in that way, influenced the rib cage movement and that pressure shift onto the lead side quite early okay so what would we consider doing instead with the hand so first of all in the start of the swing let's create some space so i use that left arm takeaway a lot that reach and then get the right hand on it so instead of the hand getting the hands getting here where the right arm looks like it's struggling for room already early on let's make a nice reach almost down the toe line, get that right hand on here with a lot of space. At that point there, discussing the pressure in the ground, I really wouldn't expect you to feel too much different left foot to right. So in early pivot, a lot of the time when the hands move in, you see the pressure shift really early into the heel as well. So that's another aspect, if you think about it, if I'm, if I'm moving into the heel almost like in this motion with my body and getting the mass on this side, I'm also reducing that space even more for the right side that leads to that um, extension of the rib cage and that right shoulder elevating okay so early on create that space more down the line takeaway rather than in and let that right hand sit on that way so it has more room then as we move I'll go this way then as we move up through backswing we're gonna keep that right hand nice and wide and away from that shoulder and at that point as we're moving up through backswing Again, for most players with this pattern, you can feel as though you keep pushing into that left leg. I don't want it to get to here where you're even and then all of a sudden, like then you're shifting onto that right leg. So it should be like a nice, you're still pushing to that left side, but it's a nice smooth shift. So when you're at the top here, you're gonna feel that you're about, about 80 percentage on your right leg. And you should, instead of feeling like you tip this way, from a rib cage standpoint, instead of being that way with it pointing to the sky, tipped that way, you should feel like the right rib cage is pointed more down and behind you with that nice wide hand to shoulder position. Okay, and then from there, we with that rib cage pointing down, we can then stay on the right side 
And then from heart, like about this position in downswing, feel as though we move through to the lead side. So instead of finishing, like we're hanging back somewhat, we're from here working on getting all the way through to the left side. Okay, so there's some things that tie it all in. Hand position, we went over quite thoroughly there. Rib cage, great reference again is this here. Instead of working around and then up to the sky, you can reference the rib cage staying more down and behind. And then from a foot standpoint, instead of once again to highlight it getting left early and then having to move right, we're gonna stay left longer at the start, then move on low to the top, then stay on the right, and then move through. So you've essentially got a few different options there of things that you could consider when going around and playing with this movement. You could, you could take all that on board and try and work it all in. My advice would be to pick just a couple of things and see how it helps the overall movement. When training this, I would typically start players off with just making the movement well in the mirror or maybe in a rehearsal or me videoing them, um, taking on board just a couple of those keys, the ones that I felt would be most appropriate for the player. And then I would probably tee, I'm not going to on a tee here, but then I would tee the ball up um, and get the player just to replicate the movement the best they can at a slow pace with the ball. So from here, nice and wide in the takeaway, nice and wide in that move there, staying on the right side, and then just moving through and finishing on the left. And at first, it doesn't need to be anything of a power shot. Let's just focus on good moving and then, and then break up your practice. As you finish this session, transition it into maybe a, a more random practice where you're hitting different shots. Okay, so that's typically what I'd advise a player um, when training this stuff. So that's the reverse pivot there. If you get a chance to try any of this, if you feel like it really applies to you, I'd love to hear how you would get on.